By now, you're probably knee-deep in Outriders Endgame content expeditions, but perhaps you're hitting a wall. Hey there, friends, it's Kodiak here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming, and today we're rolling up our sleeves and helping you fix that janky build so you can reach Challenge Tier 15. Let's be honest, you've probably watched a whole host of build guides thinking it was your golden ticket to the big leagues. The problem is, things still aren't clicking. Instead of trying to break down every class and pick out my favorite mods or weapons, I think we have to dive deeper than that and understand at a fundamental level what's actually going on within a build. The first thing you need to realize is that farming expeditions isn't necessarily the best way to get yourself the gear you need to flesh out a true budget build. In fact, I think it's probably one of the least efficient ways to do it. We've talked about a number of different farm methods here on the channel, so I'm not going to go into great lengths about that, but most of those methods, specifically the monster hunt farms, will net you dozens of epics and tons of titanium in a short amount of time. You have to focus on endgame progression in two distinct phases. The first phase we'll call building because all of the items you need can be obtained outside of expeditions. Remember those build guides I mentioned before? Well, most, if not all of them, talk about this legendary or that legendary, and the truth is those are damn near impossible to get unless you're farming the highest challenge tiers or you're just really lucky. What you need to focus on is finding pieces of gear during this building phase that you can make work in your particular scenario. Now I'm going to use my Technomancer as an example, simply because building a budget Technomancer is much easier than building out one of the other classes. When you're farming epic gear or even rare gear, the key is simple. You're looking for two things. Are one or both of the mods ideal for that build? And are the attributes beneficial for the class and playstyle? Ultimately, both come down to luck, but where you have control is in the choice to use a piece of gear or not. If an item has a solid mod like Crit Stack or Bloodlust, well, that may be something you'll want to consider, but if it has terrible attributes that will hold you back in the endgame, it's a piece you'll need to replace somewhere down the line. By focusing on those two simple things, you can create a character that can get you well into the upper echelon of challenge tiers. If you don't know what attributes are best for your build, well, that's definitely an issue. If you hold down shift while in your inventory, a new window will pop up, giving you a snapshot of your character. This is one of the most important aspects of the game, and these numbers will help you determine how effective you are in combat. To get more details about any of these attributes, simply hover over them. We're not going to break down every single one, because what's valuable to you is determined by your build you're trying to perfect. But become familiar with this screen. It's the blueprint to a perfect build. I also have to remind you that your skill tree is of the utmost importance, but at this point, there really isn't a lot to break down that you don't already know. If you're going for a firepower build, focus on that. If you're going for an anomaly build, well, focus on that. Just don't take nodes that don't matter to your ultimate build plan, and you'll be fine. I also want to take this moment to bring something to your attention, because I didn't realize it until about 100 hours into my time with the game. Because of the way HP works in Outriders, if you have a random low-level item equipped, you're hamstringing yourself, plain and simple. For most of us, that usually comes in the form of a crappy pistol or secondary weapon we're not even using. Just look at the difference in my total HP by equipping something that's lower level. It's something the game never tells you, and I'd wager a fair number of you guys have been playing with one hand tied behind your back because of this weird scaling. And speaking of scaling, here's another thing that currently has the entire community on edge. Gear scaling. Right now, dropping your challenge tier to 15, to 10, to 6, really doesn't matter at all because the game artificially deflates you to be in line with that content. There's a lot more to it, and smarter people on the internet have already unpacked the issue, but it just makes me realize that the only way to be truly viable in the game is really locking in the right build, which includes mods and attributes. Mods are a priority, since they go hand in hand with your build. You can scrape by with good mods and bad attribute rolls, but it doesn't work the other way around. That ties right into the next thing I want to talk about, the balance between offensive mods and defensive mods. It takes a bit of trial and error, but it's essential to locking in a build that will work long term. You should always focus on the offensive side of things first. It's easier to pull back from a glass cannon build than to beef up a wet blanket build. Again, I'm using my Technomancer as a way to showcase this, but it applies to every class and playstyle. As someone that uses a boring Blighted Rounds build, I was looking for offensive pieces with mods like Crit Stack, Bloodlust, 
radical therapy, critical analysis, and toxic lead. If I found a piece with at least one of those mods, I was in good shape because I could easily change out the other, class-specific mod to be something that was more beneficial to what I was going for. Once you establish your offensive gear, that's when the trial and error comes into play. The only way to know how vulnerable you are is to jump into expeditions and try them out. If you're crushing the content, keep going, but if you're repeatedly dying, you may need to start thinking about putting on some defensive mods. This is a gradual process, and if you knee-jerk too hard, you'll overcorrect and end up cutting yourself off at the knees. If you're smart, you'll save some mitigation pieces from your farming, but if you didn't do that, you'll either need to re-farm or just replace some mods. I personally start with mods like Emergency Stance, Damage Absorber, or Mitigation from Death. Not all three at once, but gradually. From here, it's a balancing act, one that you'll need to keep tuning as you push deeper into expeditions. Another important tip, as you level up your items, you'll have to reinvest more shards into the attributes. I guarantee a bunch of you have beefed up an item, leveled it up, and then never bother to check the attributes again. It's okay, you can admit it, I did too. This is incredibly frustrating since it's a huge waste of resources, but it's part of the deal. When you're leveling up your gear, you should always prioritize your weapons, but then you should prioritize any pieces of gear where the mods get a boost from the level up. Flat percentage-based mods usually stay the same. 25% is always going to remain 25%, but if I can score an extra 2,000 firepower, you bet your ass that's what I'm gonna level up first. The goal is to obviously level up as much as you can, but that's also a gradual process. Remember, you can sell items to Bailey for scrap, which you can then use to purchase titanium, so don't be afraid to sell those non-optimized items. The exchange rate is really good, and most of the time it's better than dismantling items straight up. At this point, we move into phase two, the refinement phase, and this is where all those fancy legendaries come into play. Look, the bottom line is this. You're not gonna get a lot of legendaries unless you're farming challenge tier 13s, 14s, or 15s, but you can get there with a solid budget build. In the refinement phase, your goal is to get those sweet tier 3 mods that take your build to that next level. I'm talking about things like Euthanizer, which give Technomancers an extra 25% damage boost on anything that's afflicted with Toxic. Things like that are just insane, and people selling you their perfect build, chock full of those tier 3 mods, aren't helping you achieve anything. They're just rubbing their success in your face, but don't worry, you'll reach that phase eventually. The refinement phase has twofold meaning. It helps you push into those last few challenge tiers, and it's helping you pick up mods for future use on other characters, if that's something you're interested in. Once you reach this phase, you're pretty much in the clear, and you can farm till your heart's content. You should always be keeping an eye out for those items that are better optimized, because that's going to just make the grind that much easier. But the real goal are those legendaries. Don't be afraid to tweak a few things in your playstyle at this point either. There are some incredible T3 class mods that can completely change your gameplay, you just have to identify them and roll with the punches. Just because you've used something efficiently and effectively up until this point doesn't mean there isn't something better out there, so just keep an open mind. Nothing will replace being a good player, that's just the truth. But for the rest of us, a build is the most important thing you can work on as a player, and all of it is within your control. If you need to take a step back, focus on farming for items that work for your desired build that are optimized at the drop, not after you mod them. The key is to get your gear as perfect as you can before you have to manipulate it. That's the secret that's going to take your build from just okay to absolutely insane. As always, friends, it's my goal to help you better understand and break down games, so if you enjoyed this video and you want to show your support, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. It's completely free for you, and it really does help us out a ton. You can also join us on Discord. We've got a great community of over 6,500 people, with around 800 of them in there just for Outriders, so check out that link below and join today. Finally, if you like our channel and are a fan of what we stand for here at Legacy Gaming, you can even help us out by becoming a member. For the cost of a cup of coffee, you're helping evolve the channel and build a better community. Check out that join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.